brain health has been very popular in the news lately, and this podcast is for you if you've ever had brain fog, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, CTE, any of these issues, this is the podcast where we're going to jump into the latest research from Dr. Dale Bredesen, Dr. Daniel Amen, Dave Asprey of the Bulletproof Diet, so many other people, all the minds that are really out there paving the way, blazing a path for new research, new strategies that are actually working to get your brain optimized and working at its highest, highest level. The Brain Builders Podcast is just for you. So get a notebook, get a pen, and get ready to open up your mind and get back to the person that you were meant to be. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Brain Builders Podcast. I am your host, Dr. John DeWitt, and today, after our little uh, snafu yesterday (laughs) at the uh, event in Irvine, um, today we're going to get back to more about mitochondria, the mighty mitochondria from Dave Asprey's book, Headstrong, the Bulletproof Plan to Activate Untapped Brain Energy to Work Smarter and Think Faster in Just Two Weeks. Now we are starting with good mitochondria gone bad. So before we learn how to upgrade our mitochondria, let's take a look at what causes mitochondrial dysfunction. After all, the easiest way to perform better is just to stop doing the things that slow you down. The most predictable cause of mitochondrial function decline is aging. From age 30 to age 70, the average mitochondrion decreases in (laughs) in efficiency by about 50%. That means that the average 70-year-old is making about half the cellular energy as the average 30-year-old. It's a good thing I have no intention of ever being an average 70-year-old. This decline in mitochondrial efficiency contributes to almost every symptom and disease that makes getting older suck so much. So perhaps (coughs) that statistic flipped past you. A 50% decline in your energy level is considered normal, but what if you maintained your mitochondrial performance so that it was the same at 70 as it was at 30? You'd be the most ass-kicking 70-year-old on the planet, that's what. Here's the thing about mitochondrial decay. Today, it's considered, it's considered to be inevitable. It's already started to slow, slowly happen to you with the speed dependent upon your genetics, your lifestyle, and the decisions you'll make about how to live your life from here on out. But the rate of that decay is not fixed. It is already theoretically possible to keep your mitochondrial efficiency stable well into old age, so that at age 70, you could be making the same amount of energy or more as you did at 30. The trick is to avoid early onset mitochondrial dysfunction, which is EOMD. By supercharging your mitochondria now, EOMD was discovered and named by Frank Schallenberger, MD, one of the many lecturers that he's learned from at the Silicon Valley Health Institute. He's talking about Dave Asprey, the anti-aging nonprofit that he's run for more than a decade. EOMD is defined as the deterioration of mitochondrial function in people under the age of 40. Dr. Schallenberger estimates that about 46% of people have EOMD. One of the interesting things about EOMD is that most people who have it are asymptomatic. They are not yet suffering from any major symptoms, nor have they been diagnosed with any disease. They may have strong cravings, mood swings, and frequent exhaustion, but they don't feel sick. Over time, however, EOMD leads to accelerated cell death and cell loss. Um, Decreased cell hydration, increased uh, free radical damage, decreased mental capacity, decreased ability of the body to detoxify itself, and mitochondrial decay, which means the mitochondria are destroyed. EOMD is reversible, but mitochondrial decay is not. So the earlier you can catch and reverse this condition, the better. Here is what we recommend you to know. At any age, mitochondrial dysfunction poses a real threat. It doesn't matter if you're under 30 or over 50. If you want to enjoy an amazing life, not just a comfortable enough one, you'd better prioritize the health of your mitochondria like your life depends on it because it does, literally. Early onset mitochondrial dysfunction manifests itself in four main ways. Mitochondria mishap number one, inefficient coupling. 
No, this isn't Gwyneth Paltrow's new name for divorce, though it is a pretty accurate term for my high school dating life. Fair warning, the material ahead is pretty geeky stuff, and you can skip ahead to part two, but we're not going to skip ahead. Um, if you're already convinced that your mitochondria are important and you just want to learn what to do to make them function more efficiently. But if you'll stay with, with us here for a few pages, you'll learn why mitochondrial dysfunction happens in the first place and just how much power you really have over your own energy and your own brain. The core process the cells in your body use to produce ATP is called the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, named after the scientist Hans Krebs, <clears throat> who discovered it in 1937. The Krebs cycle is an incredibly complex, multi-step process, but we're going to share you the full flow chart because you don't need that level of detail in order to change your mitochondria. What you'll see is a, or what I'm going to explain and describe is a simple version instead. Before the Krebs cycle can begin, your body converts sugar or sometimes protein into glucose, or it converts fat into a ketone body, which is a water-soluble molecule that the liver produces from fatty acids called beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB. Both glucose and BHB can provide carbon and electrons, the raw materials that create energy. Those raw materials from a molecule called acetyl coenzyme A, or CoA, and this is where the Krebs cycle starts. Throughout each round of, of the Krebs cycle, your mitochondria oxidizes coenzyme A, creating carbon dioxide and electrons. These electrons charge up a molecule called NAD, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which turns it into nicotin, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide reduced NADH. NADH is then one of the superstar molecules for your energy. Spoiler, there are cheat codes you can use to get more NADH. What? So basically, food comes into the Krebs cycle and turns into electrons. Now, if you have lots of NADH, you like how you feel because NADH is fully charged with electrons. It donates its electrons to the next step of the Rube Goldberg-like process that runs our biology, the electron transport system. There, molecules move electrons, negatively charged particles, and protons, positively charged particles, across the inner mitochondrial membrane, creating the power that drives the synthesis of ATP. The protons and electrons must work in pairs or as couples. You, your body uses their attraction to each other as a source of power by putting a membrane barrier between them. If proteins leak out, their partner electrons are left alone and useless, <clears throat> just like me in high school. Your body then uses oxygen to absorb those lonely electrons. But if the electrons and protons stay lined up on either side of your mitochondrial membrane awaiting their reunion, you don't need to waste oxygen absorbing the, with uh, oxygen absorbing the loners. You can, therefore, measure your coupling efficiency by how much oxygen you use to create ATP. All right. So that's exciting. The more oxygen your body uses, the more protons are leaking, and the less efficiently your mitochondria are producing ATP. That makes you less efficient as well. Even worse, using all of that oxygen to absorb single electrons creates free radicals that will damage mitochondria, slow you down, and give you a muffin top. Yeah, free radicals are really, really, really bad. A free radical, also known as a reactive oxygen species, is a molecule with a single unpaired electron in its outer shell. These unpaired electrons make free radicals highly reactive to other substances and sometimes even to themselves. Because they are so reactive, free radicals can cause unwanted chemical reactions that damage cells. These reactions contribute to many diseases, including cancer, strokes, diabetes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and schizophrenia. Free radicals are also a major cause of aging. Inefficient coupling is one reason that type 2 diabetes increases the risk of heart disease. <clears throat> if you have type 2 diabetes, you have smaller mitochondrial and fewer of them because they've been damaged by the free radicals that result from inefficient coupling. Remember, your heart is supposed to have a lot of mitochondria, but it won't have as many as it needs if you have diabetes. When you're suffering from coupling inefficiency, your mitochondria will burn up a lot of oxygen to create ATP. This is unsustainable. Virtually all the oxygen we breathe is used to produce energy in our cells by burning either fat or glucose. In the absence of enough oxygen to create ATP, your cells can produce energy anaerobically or without oxygen, but it is not as efficient, and it can cause cancer. That's according to Otto Warburg, who won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1931 for his hypothesis that cancer growth is caused by tumor cells generating energy anaerobically. When your mitochondria don't have enough oxygen, they cannot recharge NAD by transforming it into NADH during the Krebs cycle, leaving an excess of NAD. 
when you have more NAD and less NADH, cellular aging is accelerated. The electron chain transport slows to a crawl, and you have more free radicals and less energy. Free radicals cause swelling in the cells, and the swelling makes the electron transport system less efficient. <clears throat> so if you have even less ATP, and it is your brain that gets it hit first as this vicious cycle of low energy takes hold, the good news is that there are ways to pre prevent and reverse inefficient coupling. You are going to learn to make your mitochondria couple as efficiently as Dave Asprey wishes he did in high school. Mitochondria mishap number two, reduced recycling. Remember how your body brilliantly recycles ADP, which is spent ATP, by adding a phosphate molecule. Well, when your mitochondria aren't working perfectly, they use ATP more quickly than it can be recycled from ADP. Pretty soon, you end up with a buildup of ADP, creating a bottleneck in energy production. When this happens, the cell will run out of energy and needs to rest until more ATP can be recycled from ADP. Keep in mind that your cells cannot store more than a few seconds worth of energy at a time. Energy needs to be created on demand. Luckily, there is a plan B for when your cells need energy and there's an ADP bottleneck in production. When this happens, your cells convert the available ADP into adenosine monophosphate, which is AMP. The problem with AMP is that it normally <coughs> cannot be recycled. This is precisely why your body doesn't usually create it. You can think of AMP as disposable energy, inefficient and wasteful. Most of it is lost in your urine, and then you're back to square one with no energy and no ATP to make it with. Your body must then create more ATP by recycling ADP or by creating it from scratch through the complicated Krebs cycle all over again. If things get really bad, your body can make a very small amount of ADP directly from sugar by converting it into lactic acid. One problem with this, though is that it, ca it causes lactic acid to build up in the muscles, leading to pain and soreness. <clears throat> the other resulting problem is that it leaves no glucose available for the body to use. This means you don't have the raw materials to create new ATP. Converting glucose to lactic acid produces two molecules of ATP, but reversing this process to create glucose requires six molecules of ATP. It's the cellular equivalent of a farmer eating her seeds instead of saving them to plant the next season. In short, inefficiently recycling mitochondria can create a complete metabolic disaster, and even small inefficiencies are going to show in your performance. Don't wait for Earth Day to make sure you're recycling. There's a brand new hack for this recycling problem in the Headstrong plant. Mitochondria mishap number three is something that we are going to go into next time. But I will tell you it is called excess free radical production. And that is very exciting. I hope you're finding this exciting. And um, I appreciate you listening. I am going to be continuing to do the daily podcast around noon. Sometimes the schedule gets weird, so I just kind of get it in whenever I can. But it's always just 15 power-packed minutes of information. Hopefully you're taking lots of notes. And uh, feel free, if you do want to call and ask a question, you how let's see how do you do you call um 929-477-2792 that's 929-477-2792 if you want to call in and ask a question um also we are still adding people to the wait list for the next brain builders master class the description or the link is in the description of the podcast not too late you can get on there and then you'll get notified when the uh, master class is taking new registrants it's just a way to make sure you get in it's kind of like being on the wait list well it is like being on the wait list because that's what it is but um, really excited we're really going to up update everything make sure we're given all the information there's going to be downloadable files pdfs uh, interviews different um, guests that are going to be you know different professionals in their areas from keto diet to um, behavioral psychologists, just a whole group of people that are it's really so awesome, and I'm just really I'm blessed to be a part of that group and, and excited that it was uh, put on me to create it. So uh, you can register there. The link is also, if you don't have the, the uh, description in front of you, is bit.ly slash waitlistbb, as in Brain Builder, and that will take you to a page where you can register your email for the next um, notification of when the registration will begin. This is your host, Dr. John DeWitt. Thank you for listening to the Brain Builders podcast. We'll talk to you tomorrow.